So this is the longer Ray 5. Now you're probably thinking, wait a minute, you've already done a Ray 5 review, what are you trying to pull? And yeah, you'd be right, I did one not that long ago. Now if you didn't know that, click the link up in the corner and go watch that video. But this one's different. This is the new longer Ray 5 10 watt edition. Now I've made no secret of the fact that the Xtool D1 is my favorite diode laser and I use one around the shop here on a regular basis for just quick engraving jobs. But this one might be different. And if you want to see if this one's going to change the world, then you better stick around. How's it going everybody? Steve here and welcome back to my workshop. Now one of the perks of being, you know, quote unquote, a successful YouTuber and all of you who've subscribed have certainly played a part in that is companies will reach out and say, hey, we've got the newest, greatest product. Would you like to review it? And I've done a few on this uh, channel over the last little while, including the longer Ray 5 5 watt version. And I thought it was a decent laser for the money. If you're looking for a first entry level laser, it's fantastic. Now, I, I reviewed it and, uh, you know, I thought that was the end of it. Uh, but Longer came back to me and they, and they said, hey, you know, now that you've done this review, uh, can you give us our, your honest opinion on a few things? And I said, sure, I'd like to do that. So they asked a couple of things around what would I do to change the laser to improve it? And, uh, you know, one question which was significant to me was, would you use this as your daily laser? And I said, you know, honestly, no, it's not really my type of laser. It just doesn't have enough power. And uh, they said, oh, okay. And, you know, thanked me for my input and, and went away. And I thought, well, that was the end of it. And maybe I'd been a little too blunt with them uh, in my honesty. They came back recently and they said, hey, guess what? We have a new laser. Would you like to review it? And I said, sure. What is it? And they said, well, it's a Ray 5. And I went, yeah, you know, I already did one. And they said, no, no, this is a 10 watt laser. And I said, sure, send it along. I like the 10 watts of power. And it's nice that they were responsive to, you know, my request. So I received it and, uh, you know, I put it together. It's basically exactly the same mechanically as uh, the the previous Ray 5 I reviewed. So I'm not going to do an assembly, uh, any kind of assembly discussion in this video. This is really about testing. And uh, so what I, what I plan to do is get that 10 watt module fired up and do the usual kinds of tests. Now where possible, I'll compare it to the Ray 5 5 watt and some of the other 10 watt lasers I've looked at and really see whether this is the laser, the 10 watt laser that I would use and subsequently I would recommend you to use. So with that, let's get, let's get going here and uh, we'll look at a few tests and then I'll uh, share some results with you. Now, of course, one of the first things you need to do is connect the laser and I'm using light burn. And the good news was it recognized my previous longer Ray 5, I just had to select it. So if you've already done you know, if you've already had a longer Ray 5 configured, uh, certainly it works, but otherwise you can just use the standard uh, discovery process in uh, Lightburn to find the laser and make the connection. Anyway, it connected, it was super simple, and uh, we're ready to go. All right, so let's start looking at some results here. So I didn't do my typical dog on cardboard picture here because there's just a little too much power to do that. I couldn't get the settings. Uh, sensitive enough to get the cardboard cut, but I did the dog on on MDF and you can see if I zoom in here You can see it's uh, You know, it's very very nice uh, engraving uh, Next I did acrylic and you know acrylic is this kind of translucent acrylic is generally pretty easy to work with anyway, but uh, you can see it did a pretty nice job there. Now, here's where things get a little weird. So I did my normal uh, engraving, uh, engraving test, and you can see almost all of these were pretty dark. You can see it actually burned through there on numerous places. So what I did, you'll notice the speeds down on the side are 400, starting at 400 millimeters per minute and going up to uh, 3,000. So what I did was basically add a thousand to the speed for all of them to get what I was getting with uh, with other lasers. So uh, there you go. I basically had to go a whole lot faster to get the results. Now, when I did the uh, test on stainless steel, and you can see some of the others here, the original Ray 5 5 watt, uh, the Xtool D1, 
uh, even the uh, Laser Master 2 Pro, look at the Ray 5. So I basically did two here. The top one was the same settings that I used for the Xtool D1, so that one. And you can see it's very, very, very dark. And in fact, you can actually feel it on the, on the stainless steel. So what I did was uh, basically cut the power in half. Uh, actually, sorry, I doubled the speed and did the second one and it's, it's a little cleaner. I could actually go a little faster even. Uh, so, you know, stainless steel uh, engraving is a big win. Now, when I build things like charcuterie boards or cutting boards, well, anything really, I put a maker's mark on it, so which is my logo. So this was the one I used for the Xtool D1. And it's, you can, you can hear my fingernail over the, over the words. So it's actually engraved there. So I used the exact same settings on the Ray 5 10 watt, and you can see it's 65 millimeters per minute at 100% power. And you can see how much different that is. I mean, take a look. Uh, so what I did was I started increasing the speed. So I went to 130 millimeters per minute, definitely looking better. Then I went to 195 and thought, yeah, that's about the right, uh, the right engraving. So uh, basically three times as fast on, this is walnut, by the way, solid walnut. Now last year, I always do the cutting test. And you can see in the past, I only had one that actually cut through, which was the, uh, uh, the Laser Storm 10. Uh, from per gear this was the laser master 2 pro and you can see barely cuts through the x tools uh, almost cut through you can see this is four four passes uh, now with the ray 510 watt just cut like butter this is this is actually uh, three passes and this is solid maple quarter inch maple so I am super impressed with its cutting abilities anyway those are the results all right, you saw the output there. It's pretty exceptional from, from uh, any angle you look at it, honestly. Now let's take a look at a few things I really like and a few things I think they could still improve on. Uh, certainly in the light column is that power. Uh, it, this thing just has so, so much power and, and it's really hard to believe this is a 10 watt laser. Now, you know, you saw some of the samples here where I really had to increase the speed, sometimes as much as three times the speed of even the Xtool D1. Uh, and that says a lot because, you know, that laser was a pretty good laser. So, uh, you know, definitely that's, that alone is a reason to buy this laser. Uh, it still has the display and it's easy to use. And if you're not using USB or Wi-Fi and you're just going standalone, uh, you can pop a SD card into the, into the slot provided on the display and you can just pull your images from that directly. Uh, last on the list here, safety. Uh, this laser has all the usual uh, tilt and stall kind of detection. It also has fire detection. And unlike the Ortur Laser Master 2 Pro that I reviewed recently, uh, the fire detection uh, seems to work here. It doesn't trigger falsely like it did on the, on the Laser Master 2. Uh, now on the con side, there's still a couple of things I think they could work on. Uh, the focus is still awkward. Uh, you still have to take that long round ingot of aluminum and stick it in behind the, the laser module and then adjust all the knobs to get the focus right. It just seems really awkward and I think it's, it's a real you know, downer compared to the rest of this laser now. It's just so, so nice except for that. Uh, and second here, now that they have this great, great cutting performance, I think they could really benefit from... Uh, an air option, air assist option to, to really amplify that cutting. So, so that's it. Okay, so down to the final analysis here. Would I recommend one of these? Uh, from a power perspective alone, absolutely. This laser is fantastic from power. Uh, still a few usability issues, but uh, they're very easy to overlook when you realize you can chop through a quarter inch solid maple in no time at all. And even if you're doing engraving, you saw the engraving I did on, on Walnut, my maker's mark, and uh, I had to increase the speed by a factor of three in order to make it uh, compare to the Xtool D1 uh, output that I was using. And it's just the laser I'm going to use now for this, I'll, I'll tell you honestly. So uh, kind of a segue into the next thing, would I use this as my daily laser uh, for diode work? Uh, yeah, 
It's that simple, yes. And you'll see it, you may see it pop up in a video here and there. With that, we can wind down. I'll put an affiliate link to this laser if you're interested in buying one. Uh, click down there, you'll uh, save yourself some money, you'll help out the channel. And as always, I'll put a video up in the corner here. Uh, you know, if you're interested, go watch that and I'll see you over there. Otherwise, get out there and make your world and I'll see you next time.